Hello. In the History Boys, Mrs. Lintot represents a uh, kind of factual teaching. Her philosophy is that history, her subject, is about teaching the key information that enables the, her students to succeed. Knowing the facts is enough. Uh, Mr. Irwin is employed to teach these boys the art of presenting these facts in the most favourable way so that they can achieve. In the scene that we're going to look at today, Mrs. Lintot is addressed by the headmaster um, and told effectively that these boys, whilst very good, lack a little polish. This is perceived and seen as an insult to her philosophy. Let's take a look. You'll see at the top of the page that has been annotated that this scene is emblematic, symbolic, representative of accountability culture in the 1980s. You will all be familiar with the concept of Ofsted. Well, uh, Ofsted and, and things like it, there's things like the league tables that schools are sort of judged by, um, was introduced in the 1980s uh, and is often seen as Thatcherism or a Thatcherite Thatcherite sort of mechanism, really. Um, who is Thatcher? Well, Thatcher is Margaret Thatcher, who was the prime minister of the period. And the headmaster, who is our stock fool character, um, embodies our accountability culture. And because the headmaster is a fool, we are therefore being encouraged to see accountability culture as foolish also. Hector rejects accountability culture because he's unconcerned with exams. Mrs. Lintot is, is a part of it, but she thinks that her teaching of history is enough. Erwin, by contrast, appears to fit more into this system. He fits into the system a little more, I should say, because he teaches the boys uh, a mechanism, really, uh, a style of writing that enables the results of the school to go up. And that's what the headmaster is sort of solely interested in. So in the scene, what do we see? The headmaster addresses Mrs. Lintot. He says they're very good. Um, she says that she wants to do more of the same, teaching their facts so then they know their stuff. But the headmaster says, I'm thinking league tables, open scholarships, reports to the governors. I want them to do themselves justice. I want them to do you justice factually tip-top as your boys always are, something more is required. So this is quite the uh, backhanded compliment. You know, your boys are factually tip-top, but knowing your stuff, knowing the facts uh, is not enough. At the bottom of the page, he refers to the word presentation. Grooming is inappropriate because to groom uh, sometimes has the connotations of sexual predatory behavior. Presentation he perceives to be the right word. Mrs. Lintot is disdainful and dismissive of such an attitude. How do we see this? She views the, the word presentation as a sprig of parsley, an umbrella in the cocktail. Are professors so stupid? Are dons so naive? Why are we, why does Bennett use these metaphors, these ideas of the sprig of parsley and an umbrella in the cocktail? Because if there is a sprig of parsley on your plate of pasta, what do most people do? There's the plate, they pick off the parsley and put it on the side of the plate on the table. If you want to drink a cocktail, a mocktail perhaps for people under the age of 18, um, and there's an umbrella. What, what do you do? You pick up the drink, you take the umbrella out, you put it on the side because it serves no purpose, uh, and then you drink your drink. The headmaster says that he's thinking of the boys. Yes, it's not about us. It's not about the school's reputation, even though he just said it was. He's thinking of the boys. Of course he is. What he wants is 
Think charm, think polish, think Renaissance man. You'll see the, the annotations here. What isn't a Renaissance man? It's a person who is clever at a variety of things. A person who is versatile. Uh, the Renaissance man, um, I don't know, think of your artists, Leonardo da Vinci, um, Donatello. Um, basically go to, go to Florence if you can one day and you'll see sort of Renaissance art and Renaissance architecture in, in place. Uh, and what were these people good at? Well, they were good at a bit of science and they did a bit of sculpture and they might have done a bit of painting. Uh, they would have done some reading. Generally, they were well-rounded, ca very capable people. So the headmaster suggests that what he wants is well-rounded people. The problem with that, you may have seen from my facial expression there, uh, is that he doesn't want well-rounded well people, well-rounded people. He wants people, boys, who get good results. And that isn't about being well-rounded. That's about jumping through the hoops of whatever the exam is. And that's why Erwin is employed. <clears throat> the headmaster leaves. And Hector comes in. And we, we find out where these two teachers went for their universities. Um, Hector went to Sheffield. He wasn't, perhaps he wasn't capable enough to go to Oxford or Cambridge. Perhaps um, he just didn't agree with the values of Oxford and Cambridge. Mrs. Lintot went to Durham. And maybe this explains why they are less concerned with the boys going to Oxford and Cambridge. Um, but we also, in this particular scene, get a real feel for Mrs. Lintot's character. Yes, she is the embodiment of a teaching philosophy that suggests knowing your stuff, uh, knowing the facts is good enough. But she has a very droll, dry sense of humour. And her honesty contrasts with the deception and the lies and the deceit of nearly all the other male characters in the text, certainly the teachers. What does she say? Durham was very good for history. It's where I had my first pizza. Other things too, of course, but it's the pizza that stands out. There's the droll, dry sense of humour. Durham, a particularly good university, um, but apparently not good enough for people like the headmaster. Um, and in the, the line there about having her first pizza, but other things too, of course, it's a euphemism for sex. Um, and it reveals what university might be about for some, which is it's about coming of age. It's about um, growing up, becoming an adult. But she says there that it was the pizza that stood out. So as we read on, um, we will see Mrs. Lintot embody uh, and continue to embody this attitude. Um, she doesn't change. The issue, of course, of Mrs. Lintot uh, is that Bennett doesn't really include her in the text very much. She is a marginalised female voice. Maybe that's deliberate because he's disinterested in the female perspective or more kindly, and I think more, more accurately, he marginalises the female voice of Mrs. Lintot to mirror the marginalisation of women in 1980s society. The scene ends with Mrs. Lintot being somewhat sarcastic. She refers to the headmaster as our fearless leader. Uh, there's not much kindness in such a phrase. She says that being bright is not enough. Um, and that's why presentation appears to matter in the text. Hector says it, would, it never was enough, even in my day. So we're being told here also about what society values. Knowing enough doesn't really matter. It's not, it, it's not the be all and end all. It's the presentation of what you know. And it's at this stage that I'd encourage you to think about um, Anybody who's in a kind of leadership role, whether it's the head teacher of our school um, or the prime minister or, or, or the head of, the CEO of a company. Do they know their stuff? Does that matter? Does how they present their knowledge matter more than the knowledge itself? What do you value?
what do you find important? That's it for this particular video. Um, focusing particularly on Mrs. Lintop. That is our first introduction to her. Um, if she comes up as a question, uh, it's a bit of a gift. Um, so use videos like this to ensure that you know all about her. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.